Hey, Eden. Thanks. Hi, for, John. Uh, yeah, thanks for doing this. I uh, appreciate you taking some time. Um, people may think we're not busy, but it seems like we still find things to do, right? Sure. At, at least my my honeydew list has expanded, <laughs> right? All this stuff around the house. But you know, thank you for, for joining us. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is Eden Jerzak, and Eden has uh, been in ministry full time. She was a lead pastor for five years, and um, we just want to ask her a couple questions and hear how she been, is dealing with and and what she's thinking about during this time where we've been isolated. So, Eden, what's been on your heart and mind? What What are the things that you've been contemplating or learning or just considering or thinking about uh, that you feel like are important for you to, to pursue or give further thought to or action? Um, it's interesting because I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people, like, like you said, we're busy and it feels like in some ways even more connected than mm. when we're on the road or um, just home for a short period of time. And what I'm noticing is that people are dealing, including me, with a lot of feelings that they haven't felt for a long time or maybe ever, and they're not quite sure what to do with them. And so... Like um, an example? Thought? Um, just uh, losses, like they're, they're having to face losses, but also, like, what do I do with myself? Um, I'm, I'm stuck at home and all my normal distractions, um, aren't part of the, <laughs> the protocol these days. And so now I'm facing some of the things that I've put off or pushed down or set aside for a period of time. And now, um, you know, I have, I, I'm hearing people say, I have all of these feelings and they don't know how to, um, how to face them or how to how to even identify what they are mm. and so for me um what i'm noticing is it's really important to um clearly identify what the feeling is you're having because what we're prone to do is making uh, make uh, we're saying we're feeling everything when we're not feeling everything. There's something that is coming forward that we need to address. Yeah. And if we take a few minutes and sit back and consider like maybe what started this, is this about a person? Is this about me? Uh, is it about a situation? Is this old? Is this new? And we just take ourselves through a few questions. We can actually identify the present feeling that we're having. And then we can, we can actually address it and kind of go, oh, okay, like this has been around for a long time. I need to take care of this. And then, you know, if it's, if it's my process, I enter into that with Jesus. And then I do some listening around it. And what's helpful then is kind of as I, as I address each new feeling that comes up, I can kind of put that back on the shelf, but it's not like it's hidden. It's like it's got a, its label right. on it. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes up again, I can go, oh, I know what this is. And I know why this is here. And then I can address it again and take care of it and myself and then put it back. And um, it, it's for me, what I see is kind of like it's a library of feelings at this mm. point. So, but, you know, my point for me is, I don't want to say I'm feeling everything because I'm not feeling everything. It's not helpful to myself just to like throw it up like a piece of, you know, chaos that, that, you know, has control over me. There is usually one or two specific things that are coming up that need to be addressed. And so do that for yourself. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? For sure. Like you have to be, um, you have to be committed to wanting to do that for yourself, but especially in these days, like we have more time than we normally have to just consider those kind of things. Um, 
on top of that, I've, um, I've spent a bit of time listening to a podcast or two on grief because in this last two weeks, my mom has passed away. Mm. And so not only do you have the challenge of grieving um, and grieving someone you loved, but it's in um, such bizarre circumstances where we can't even have a funeral for my mom. And, you know, my mom was the funeral lady and she made sure that anyone who came to the church that needed to have a funeral, whether they were part of the church or not, um, got a lovely meal and was cared for like they were family. Mm. So for us to have to, at this point, um, postpone that till it's safe to do so, um, feels a little off. And then, you know, last Thursday we had a graveside funeral um, with just our immediate family. There was like 20 of us and we all had to stand apart. And my poor dad, who's just lost his sweetheart of 62 years, is standing alone. Mm. And, you know, there's all kinds of wrong about the scenario yeah. that we're living, yeah. right? Um, and so um, I, I listened to a Brene Brown uh, podcast with uh, David Kessler. It's quite recent, and it's um, it's on, on her Unlocking Us uh, podcast, and um, it's brilliant. It's really, really helpful, and we don't need more ways to do stuff. Like we don't need more process so much as we need permission, and so I'm looking for places to get permission these days. Mm. Um, Another another place I feel like I got permission was watching, a, of all things, a Ricky Gervais um, series called mm. Afterlife. And, After... uh, Afterlife. Okay. And uh, so it, it's the story. It's only six episodes. They're only about a half hour long. So you can totally binge that in an evening. <laughs> um, but... Um, and a caveat that, you know, or a warning that, you know, it's Ricky Gervais and it might be a little um, colorful at times in the language. But, um, you know, he's, he's just lost his wife of 25 years and mm. he's hurting severely. But what you see in these episodes is him find um, hope and life in the most unlikely people and places. And I like that. Yeah. I like that um, I don't just have to depend on uh, my church family or um, the people who call themselves Christians, but that hope in life might be coming from anyone who I come in contact with or who might have something to share with me. And um, it just, it keeps my, my eyes open and my heart open that God might just be showing up in the most unlikely places no, and i know that he i i think ricky gervais if he heard this he would just be so appalled that i would yeah. step on in the middle of his his uh, his show but actually it's really redemptive and i i think i think he really nailed it that's awesome I, yeah yeah i i think uh i i love what you're saying just the idea of learning to look and to listen um, cause I, I'm just under the assumption that God is always speaking. He has something to say yeah. and the difficulty isn't, uh, on his end, it's ours, you know, and for a lot of, for a lot of us, including myself, I didn't know what to listen for. I was trained all my life to listen only exclusively one way. This is the only way God will ever speak to you. And it was through right. a written text. And so to just open up the possibility that God is speaking through anyone at any time um, just by, and it may not be an actual conversation. It may be something that we observe. Like you're watching something, you're observing how he's handling something and that speaks to you. And it's, it's God saying, yeah, pay attention. This, this is me. Yeah. That, I, I, I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, I have, I have a question that's going to segue to this in a minute because um, I think you, you've offered us some really um, wise counsel 
in what you've been thinking about and what you've been dealing with. And let me say too, I, I'm sure um, others will feel this way too, but our, our obviously our condolences go out to you. And I can't imagine, uh, when I try it, it's very difficult to imagine losing someone and not being able to have the closure of a funeral that we're accustomed to or yeah. um, the hugs, the touch, the physical um, ability to be able to, you know, heal because it's certainly yeah. part of it. Um, but thank you for sharing that. So I'm going to ask you, <laughs> Uh, we're going to have just a little bit of fun. I'm going to ask you some questions. Some of them, I'm just going to say a word. And I just want you to give me just the first thing that comes to your mind, just a one word response. Um, I mean, you can think about it. It doesn't have to be like reactive, <laughs> but it can be. <laughs> so, um, but we'll give it a shot. Okay. Social distancing. Difficult. Okay. Living with Brad Jerzak. More difficult. <laughs> Sorry, that was too hard. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And it's recorded. I got it. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really good. Thanks for the thanks for the ammo. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Favorite thing that you've done while being sheltered since you kind of went into lockdown isolation? Oh, happy hour. Okay. And explain happy hour to us. I'll give you a chance to explain that. Sure. Um, you know, we have a lovely deck just off of our kitchen and um, the weather started to warm up in the last week or so. And I just love getting out there, getting a little bit of sun. So around 3, 3.30, um, I go out there and Brad quite often will come out and I'll just make us a little snack kind of thing. And Brad will usually have a beer or a glass of wine. I I don't drink, so um, um, I, I'll have something else to um, to enjoy. But we just have that time to just kind of hang out and relax. And actually, it actually is happy hour. It's not because of liquor. Right. It's because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're together and we're just kind of chilling. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that you call it happy hour, too. Which, that's a, an easy segue. Your favorite snack. Um, wow. So many to choose Any, from. <laughs> I, just anything fresh for okay, me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's healthy. People would love that. Um, what are you currently reading? I'm sure you, you may be reading multiple things, but if you are, just pick one that has caught your interest. Uh, a book, and Brad may have used this as well. Um, called the oh it's just totally leaving me now sorry the murderers the murderers gorilla okay and it's a it's a children's book like it's it's aimed for children um it's um been translated i think from swedish okay and um it is a fantastic like adventure story and it's written by a female gorilla in her wanderings. Okay. And it's, it's exceptional, I think. Awesome. I, I really need something out of the box these days, like yeah, yeah. not intense. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Something just, just enjoyable. And the yeah. title again for everybody? Um, the the murderous? murderous Gorilla. Okay, awesome. Murderous Gorilla. Okay. Um, Current project. Uh, I have my painting clothes under my sweater. I'm, uh, we're redoing our guest room and it's my job to paint the walls. So okay. that'll be going back to that shortly. Yeah. My wife would love that. Um, <laughs> list your favorite thing about social distancing. Um, well, the privacy okay yeah um so this this question will be kind of along what you were already saying and you can do more than one word on this one um 
a word of advice, a word of wisdom, reflection, whatever that you'd want to leave in terms of the time that we have, because we do have this time, but a word of wisdom of maybe something that's helped you or you found um, enjoyable, productive, stimulating, whatever. Um, so here, here's just a little something I've been doing for myself so that I don't get to the end of the day thinking, did I get anything done? Mm. Um, I'm still recovering from surgery and, um, uh, some other challenges. And so my energy is fairly low. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I need to have a way to show that I'm actually doing something. So the first thing in the morning I do is I, uh, I take my phone and I set the timer for five minutes. And in that five minutes, I only focus on the bedroom. And in five minutes, I can make the bed. I can, you know, grab laundry and get it into a basket and ready to go to the laundry room. I can give the bathroom a wipe down or hang up some clothes that I didn't hang up the night before. Um, and in five minutes, I'm really surprised at what I can get done. And for the rest of the day, at least that room is in some sort of order. <laughs> and I'm not just overwhelmed by I haven't got anything done. And then the rest of the day, I, I make a list of things that I want to get done, but they don't have to be done. But when they are done, I check them off or I stroke out that task so that at the end of the day, I can look at my list and go, oh, look, I did three things. There's 10 things on the list, but I did three. I got three things done. Right. And I can just feel some sense of accomplishment because when our days are kind of without name or place, the way they are right now, where it's like, what day is it? Or what time is it? Or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, we can kind of just spin our wheels easily. And so it's a way of me kind of keeping on track at some level. Um, yeah, to, it, it almost provides a structure, a framework to kind of yeah. just orient you to the, yeah. to the days and weeks. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Eden. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking time. Um, and like I said earlier, you look great. You don't look like you're recovering from surgery. So that's, I hope that's encouraging to you. So. Yeah. <laughs> and have, sure. have fun painting, but thanks again. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome.